This is block four of topic two. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at reflections, translations, and rotations. We're going to use them to explore some problems and to make some conjectures about some geometric properties. Remember, as we go through geometry, we're going to be looking at patterns, observing those patterns, and making conjectures. We're going to get to where we have to justify these discoveries, though. So we're going to be having to get into some proofs to prove that our discoveries are true. Once we prove them true, remember they will become theorems. One term we need to be familiar with is rigid transformation. A rigid transformation is one that preserves an object's size and shape. Remember, when you have two objects that have the same size and shape, they are called congruent. So our rigid transformations that we're looking at are reflections, translations, and rotations. So they will maintain the size and shape of an object, which means all of the angles will stay the same degree measure, and all of your side lengths will stay the same length when you perform these transformations. You may already remember what the sum of the measures of an, the, the angles of a triangle have to be. You may have explored this through this certain exploration that I'll remind you of here, where we have triangle ABC, the vertices, the angles are labeled with those capital letters A, B, and C. If we just kind of mark just the angles, we just want to look at them, and we tear them apart, we can then bring those angles together so that the vertices match up together. So we're going to bring the vertex of angle A together with the vertex of angle B together with the vertex of angle C. As you can see in this picture, these three angles together make a straight angle. And we know a straight angle has 180 degrees. So this is one way to prove that the sum of the three angles of any triangle has to add up to be 180 degrees. And so that's the very first thing that you should have on your notes here. Number one, the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. All right, so in our patty paper exploration, you're going to need three sheets of patty paper and you're going to need a straight edge. Let me explain your directions here, and then you can pause the video to get those supplies ready. So on your first sheet of patty paper, you need to use your straight edge, and you just need to draw a large, but a just random triangle ABC. It doesn't have to be a special triangle of any, so just fill up that patty paper um, with a large triangle. So here's a model of what I'm expecting. When you get that triangle um, drawn, remember we're going to label it with the vertices A, B, and C. The next two patty papers are just going to be tracings of this triangle. So you're going to get another sheet of patty paper and you're going to trace your original one and this paper you're going to label as A prime, B prime, C prime. And then with your third one, you're going to trace it again and label this one as A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Mine um, are on parchment paper. I'm at home and I didn't have any patty paper. So remember in a pinch, you can use parchment paper or wax paper from your house because they are also see-through and that's the property we need from our patty paper. So go ahead and get your three sheets of patty paper ready, pause the video and just start it back up when you're ready to continue. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at that original triangle ABC and we're going to fold the midpoint of this side, segment AB. In order to fold the midpoint, we're going to do a fold we should be familiar with. It's the perpendicular bisector fold because remember the perpendicular bisector goes right through the midpoint of that segment. So to fold that, we do a point-to-point -point fold. So we're going to fold our paper so that point A is on top of point B. I don't have to crease, I could, but I don't have to crease the whole perpendicular bisector. I'm just interested in this midpoint right here. So you can see I'm just pinching right here on that segment so that when I open it up, I can see that pinch and I'm going to label that midpoint as point D. 
I'm going to do that same exact thing to this side, segment BC. And again, you can pause this video anytime you need to to catch up. And again, I'm going to put point C on B or point B on top of C. It doesn't matter which one is on top there. And I'm just going to pinch that midpoint. So just pinching my paper right there on the segment. And I'm going to label that midpoint as point E. So now that we have our original triangle all set up the way we need to, we're going to look at taking our second triangle, which is triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and we're going to put it on top of our original one so those sides match up. So again, the angles are the same because it's a tracing. The segment sizes are the same because it's a tracing. We're going to do a rotation, which means we're not going to change the angle or the side length measures. We're going to rotate around that midpoint D, so you can see it through your patty paper, and I'm going to put my pen right there to keep that point still. We're going to rotate our top paper, so you're going to try to keep your bottom paper still, and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees, which means it's going to be upside down. And so if you do that correctly, side B prime A prime is right on top of side B A. Now, you're going to have to be a little coordinated here. We're going to keep these two sheets still, and we're going to grab our three, our third sheet of patty paper, paper, patty paper number three, I guess. We're going to put that on top of the original one while keeping those two still that we've already um, got positioned correctly. So I'm putting that one on top. This time we're going to do another 180 degree rotation, but this time around point E. So I'm going to put my pen on E to keep that point still. Again, you only want to move the top patty paper, so you want to keep those bottom two still, and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees, which means it should end up upside down. And again, a little bit of coordination, and if you need to, you can just slide that back where it's supposed to go. So this time, side B prime C prime, I mean B double prime C double prime should be on top of side B C from your original triangle. So this is the result that we want. We have triangle ABC in the middle. We have upside down A prime B prime C prime on the left side, <coughs> and upside down A double prime D double prime C double prime on the right side. Okay, so we're going to look at answering questions two and three on your note. So number two says that since we know that this angle, B prime, A prime, C prime, this one up here of our second triangle, was just a rotation of our original angle, B, A, C, that was down here. What can we say about those two angles? Well, we know that they are congruent because a rotation maintains or preserves that angle measure. So on my patty paper, I'm going to put arcs there to show those two angles are congruent. On your notes for angle two, you're going to write, angle B prime, A prime, C prime is congruent to angle B, A, C. And again, that's because rotations are rigid transformations and maintain that angle measure. Number three says, since angle A double prime, C double prime, B double prime, which is this one up here of the third triangle, was just a rotation of our original ACB that was down here in the original triangle. Since that was just a rotation, what can we say about those angles? And again, we can say those are congruent. So we can put double arcs here, double arcs here to show those two angles are congruent on our patty paper. And on our notes, we're going to write angle A double prime, C double prime, B double prime is congruent to angle A. C, B. And again, that's because rotations preserve angle measure. The other angle here, which was angle um, A, B, C, it didn't we, didn't, we just kept it the same angle. So, of course, it's congruent to itself, right? So, what we have up here are all three angles of the original triangle, again, making a straight line together. So this is just a way to use transformations to prove what we wrote for number one in our notes, that the sum of the measures of the three angles of the triangle has to be 180 degrees. And we use transformations to show that. All right, so you can set those folds aside.
and we're going to look at another um, transformation.